Welcome to another <clears throat> Surgical Pathology slide review sign out. Uh, today <clears throat> we will talk again about some pancreatic pathology and discuss uh, in particular the case of a 60 year old woman with a diffuse ductal dilatation noted in the pancreas as detected on uh, imaging. Typically patients uh, with this type of pattern have uh, some sort of mucinous uh, neoplasm of the uh, pancreatic duct and uh, oftentimes on endoscopy will have uh, mucin exuding from the uh, ampulla of vater. <clears throat> the head of the pancreas was excised and uh, this is uh, a representative section. In contrast to uh, what we have seen previously, here we see virtually no residual normal pancreatic parenchyma, but instead a very exuberant uh, and somewhat papillary uh, lesion occupying a large space here with extension out along a apparent duct uh, towards the periphery. Surrounding, we see areas of fibrotic uh, tissue, some cellular areas in there. Um, and we'll take a look at what those uh, represent on higher magnification. Uh, we see that there's some apparent lymphoid tissue here. Um, surrounding a few of the nerves, that uh, of course raises suspicion that those are uh, inflamed and there may be something going on there. But importantly, we don't see any evidence here of uh, invasive uh, neoplasia. What we do see are a few areas uh, such as these, which look to be epithelial cells, but in reality are <clears throat> small residual islets. Um, with fairly uniform uh, cells and slightly foamy granular cytoplasm. Coming back to low magnification, we'll look here at this introductal process. <clears throat> we see that the epithelium does have a mucinous character, uh, but in looking at the epithelium, we see that there is uh, quite a bit of stratification and some nuclear atypia. Uh, most of the nuclei still, still are relatively basally located, um, and most of the cells have some cytoplasmic mucin, but we see mitoses. We see little bits of karyorectic debris and a more complex architecture here that would be indicative of uh, higher grade dysplasia. Not full anaplasia, but uh, certainly some significant uh, uh, dysplasia is present here. Looking a little further, we may even see uh, more areas where there's uh, uh, more loss of uh, cytoplasmic mucin here, just a few residual droplets here and a little bit more rounding up and coarsening of the nuclear chromatin, indicating, again, higher grade dysplasia. Uh, mitotic figures are evident. Um, and so uh, this looks like a process uh, of uh, papillarity, mucinous epithelium, and uh, associated uh, dysplasia. So we would uh, consider this to be an introductal papillary mucinous neoplasm with areas of dysplasia. Now, once that is established, we have to ask the question, is there evidence of invasion? So, of course, we'll look further along this uh, margin, uh, look along here to see are there evidences that this is other than uh, an introductal process. Uh, certainly here we see a nice organized, uh, fairly smooth border. And extending it over here, we see that this still looks like it's uh, the remnant of a residual uh, lobule of pancreatic epithelium because we have here, again, the uh, remaining islets after uh, loss of the exocrine um, pancreatic parenchyma. Looking a little further here, we again see more islets. Here we have a vessel, um, some inflammation around it. But again, just islets, no evidence of uh, invasive neoplasia here, uh, even though a few of these little islet structures have a slightly ductal uh, dilated appearance. They're not uh, anaplastic or uh, worrisome for carcinoma. A 
looking a little bit further at this area, somewhat of concern here, we do have a large mucin pool and um, as you see here, this has an interrupted end and no epithelial lining here or extending around here with some uh, separation and septation of the uh, surrounding parenchyma. So this is highly concerning for a component of mucinous carcinoma extending into the stroma arising in this introductal papillary mucinous neoplasm. Now, we don't see epithelial invasion, but we do see mucinous invasion. So uh, with that finding, uh, this would be uh, compatible with introductal papillary mucinous uh, uh, neoplasm with a focal area of mucinous carcinoma invading uh, the pancreatic uh, parenchyma. Let's contrast that case with this one, where again we see a very papillary neoplasm involving large dilated ductal spaces uh, throughout several areas here. Uh, so again, it looks to be primarily an introductal papillary uh, proliferation. Uh, but we'll look a little further here. Again, we see uh, some residual uh, islets uh, around the periphery of this, some inflammation, again, involving perineural spaces. Uh, we do see here a little island of epithelium. Uh, unclear whether that's uh, uh, a residual duct or whether that could represent invasive neoplasia. Here we see, again, papillarity, a very hyalinized fibrotic uh, periphery. And then we begin to see little indentations into this hyalinized periphery, suggesting the possibility of invasion. This sclerosis around the, the duct suggests that there's uh, been some active involvement there. Um, and here again, we see some sort of fenestrations to this uh, peripheral area again suggesting the possibility of invasion. Uh, here again, an irregularity. So this begins then to look not like just a typical duct with a preserved wall, but more like a, a pushing pattern of invasion. Let's focus again on this particular area where again we see this uh, seeming pushing into the surrounding stroma. And here again, we have this little clue of what appears to be an incomplete epithelial lining. Here we see some reactive stroma. And lo and behold, here again, uh, mucin pools out in the stroma, uh, this time not associated with specific epithelium, uh, but certainly, again, raising concern for early uh, invasive uh, neoplasia in association with this introductal papillary mucinous neoplasm. So in these papillary uh, neoplasms, uh, we have to be concerned about invasion uh, and uh, uh, search carefully to establish those criteria that help us are uh, irregularities of the margins of the uh, introductal uh, lesion, uh, abnormalities of stromal response, such as we saw here, um, variation in the nature of the peripheral palisading, and then, of course, uh, any evidence that uh, either single cells or small uh, tissues are present in places they don't belong, like perineural spaces or immediately juxtaposed uh, to uh, uh, nerves. And then finally, the, uh, the other clue that we would uh, look for is the presence of uh, extracellular uh, free-floating mucin with or without uh, intraepithe with with or without uh, associated epithelial cells within that pool. So with that, we'll conclude today's uh, discussion of uh, pancreatic neoplasias. A little bit more uh, advanced uh, cases of introductal papillary mucinous uh, neoplasia with associated uh, dysplasia and uh, early uh, invasive uh, mucinous carcinoma. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you again next time.